Welcome back, algebra students. Today, we're going to be using what we've talked about with slope, and we've talked about um, intercepts, x and y intercepts. We're going to be combining that into slope-intercept form. So a slope, remember, that's going to talk about um, how a line is moving. Okay. It can be a positive or a negative slope, horizontal or vertical, um, and it talks also about how steep it is, if it's a really steep line or if it's more of a, a flatter kind of a line. The y-intercept, we've talked about x-intercepts and y-intercepts. The y-intercept is on a graph where a line crosses the y-axis. The letter that we use for the y-intercept is the letter B, and when we are graphing, that's where our graph will begin. So slope is how it moves. The y-intercept is where we begin. So when we put those two things together and we write the equation for slope-intercept form, it looks like this. y equals mx plus b. So I just said that the slope, we know that m is what we use for slope. The slope is how the line moves. The b is going to be the y-intercept. That's when we graph, that's where we will begin. Hopefully, again, you remember slope-intercept form from last year, y equals mx plus b. And we've referenced that already this year when we were um, trying to decide if functions were linear, we said, could it be written like y equals mx plus b? So before we actually do a graph, so let's take a look at lines that are already graphed and see if we can find the slope, because we're good at counting slope, and see if we can find the y-intercept so we could actually write these equations. So the first one does have a negative slope. I can see that it's crossing the y-axis right here at 3, and I find some other points where it's hitting right on the grid mark so I can count my slope. So my slope is negative 2 over 3. The y-intercept, remember we're going to use the letter b for the y-intercept, that's right there. That's at positive 3. We don't need an ordered pair. We just want to know the number where it crosses the y-axis. Now that I know my m and my b, so slope-intercept form, remember, looks like y equals mx plus b. All I have to do is put my two numbers in the right place. I want you to notice there's an x in slope-intercept form. However, the slope is just the number. So when we're talking about the slope, please don't talk, tag an x onto the end of that. So this is going to be y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 3. I just said when you're talking about the slope, don't tag that x on there. However, some people are so concerned about finding these two numbers, when they write their equation, they totally forget the x in the equation. So make sure that you're getting that x in the equation. The second one does have a positive slope. So I want to find some points that I can count with my slope. So this one is a positive slope. It's going up 2 and over 1. Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. So my slope is 2 over 1. And if we simplify that, that's just 2. The y-intercept, the b, is right here at negative 2. So when I write this equation, it would be y equals 2 for the m, x, and then if we keep it with the plus, like we have in the actual equation, we'd say plus a negative 2. You know that you can clean that up and make it look like that. Those are the same answer. A couple more. Hopefully by now you can look at this first example and see that the slope is negative 1. It's going down 1 and over 1, but if you need to put some points in there and count, you absolutely can do that. This is going down one over one, down one over one. So my slope is a negative one over one or just negative one. The y-intercept is right there, so the b is equal to one. So my equation is going to be y equals negative one x plus one. 
And again, by now you know this negative one in front of the x, I could write that as just negative x plus one. I'm fine with either answer as long as you recognize that they are both the same thing. This second example also, hopefully you'll recognize this slope. It's just a positive one slope. You go up one and over one and up one over one, up one over one. Right? So my slope is up one over one or just one. My y-intercept, again, that's right there, that's at negative four. So if I would just put those two numbers into my formula, I would have y equals one x plus negative four. And we could clean that up and just say y equals x minus four. Same equation for both of them. So recognizing from a graph and finding those two things, that's nice. But really today we are focused on, I give you an equation, you graph it. So for the first problem, if it helps you, you can absolutely write down the M and the B before you start graphing. For this one, the slope is one half. The y-intercept is one, right? Y equals mx plus B. So this means that it's gonna start, begin at one on the y-axis, and my slope is one half. Remember that's rise over run, that means I'm gonna go up one and over two. For slope, we've counted slope, but we haven't actually graphed slope before. So if you need to do those like little swoopy things like this, up one, over two, and get a point, go right ahead. I personally don't do that. Sometimes I'll just kind of touch my paper and go up one and over two and get my point. Um, however, I may want to get some more points, and I ran out of room going that way. So if I want a positive slope, it still has to go uphill from left to right, but I could go negative one and negative two because a negative over a negative would still be a positive slope. So I could do that again. And then I'm gonna encourage you to use some kind of a straight edge, a ruler, the edge of your planner, or even fold a piece of paper over whatever. Um, get a straight as, long, as straight of a line as you can, and lines have arrows. So make sure that you're writing your arrows on there. For the second problem, I want to find my slope, which is negative 2. But if we're counting slope, if we're graphing slope, I want it to look like a fraction. Negative 2 over 1. And my y-intercept is 4. So I'm going to begin at 4 on the y-axis. Now, for a slope of negative 2, that means I'm going to go down 2 and over 1 and get a point. Down 2, over 1, get a point. Okay, and then you would draw your line, get your arrows. All right, for the first example in this slide, <clears throat> now we've got a bunch of negative stuff, okay? So my slope is going to be negative 5 over 2. And my y-intercept, here you want to be careful. Don't lose it, that's a negative. The y-intercept is negative Three. So that means I'm going to begin at negative 3. Now I need a negative slope. I need to go down 5 and over 2 from here, but my graph is not big enough to do that. I know that it needs to look like it's going downhill. So instead of going down 5, what if I would go up 5 but then go left to work backwards? So if I would go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then left 2, that does look like a negative slope. And in fact, on this problem, that's the only two points that I can get. I don't have space to get another point. So as soon as you've got those, you can draw your line. This last example looks like it's missing stuff. You know that if you have a negative in front of a variable, you can sneak a one right there. And I need something to be added at the end, but it can't change anything. So I'm gonna add a zero. So my slope, is negative one, my y-intercept is zero. That, that means I'm gonna start at the origin. And my slope is negative one over one, so down one over one, get a point. Get a bunch of points going that way, or up and left. And draw your line. So today's worksheet uh, for your practice problems, it's uh, another riddle worksheet. 
Uh, whom should you talk to? Who, whom should you see at the bank if you need to borrow money? So that's the borrow money worksheet. The answer key is in Schoology. And make sure you take the formative quiz when you're finished with that. Uh, on this worksheet, on these practice problems, when you draw your line, you should be hitting one of the letters around the outside of the graph if you're doing it right. If you don't hit a letter, you might want to go back and see if you made a mistake. Let me know if you need any help.